Do miracles happen? The obvious answer for Christians is yes. From Genesis to Revelation, the Bible is full of miracles. Dead people are brought back to life, blind people are given sight, and water is turned into wine. Miracles are used throughout the Bible to show that God exists and is all-powerful, that Jesus' claims were true and that the apostles and prophets were sent by God. If miracles didn't happen, then the Bible would largely be a collection of fairy stories, and the church would be another club or society trying to do good but having no supernatural power to achieve it. But does science support the idea of miracles? Fortunately, it is easy to see from the Bible that science shows that miracles do happen. To do this, I would like to look at the chapter of the Bible that contains the most and greatest miracles, miracles that affect every single person on earth today, miracles that too many people in the church fail to think of as miracles and too easily dismiss them as myths. These are the miracles of Genesis 1. Now Richard Dawkins says that miracles can't happen because they go against the laws of science. But from Genesis 1, it is easy to see that miracles do happen because they go against the laws of science. Because these miracles have no naturalistic explanation, the best answer for them is the miraculous. And unlike many of the miracles in the Bible, these are all things that we have physical evidence of them happening. The chapter starts out with, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. In this we see that God brings about the existence of time, space and matter. Now the first law of thermodynamics says that matter and energy will never just appear out of nothing. Yet somehow we have a huge amount of matter and energy throughout our universe. According to all our scientific knowledge, there is no naturalistic explanation as to the cause of our universe coming into existence. The creation of the universe is the first great miracle in the Bible. Just the fact that we have a universe shows that miracles do happen. Another miracle of the Bible shown in Genesis 1 is the creation of water. Huge areas of our earth are covered with water. Our bodies are largely made up of water, and water is essential for all life. But where did that water come from? Scientists have no naturalistic explanation as to where the huge quantity of water on Earth came from. The water on Earth cannot be explained naturally because it was created supernaturally on the first day of creation. The fact that we have water on Earth shows that miracles do happen. On the third day of creation, God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seeds in it, according to their various kinds. And it happened just as God said. Now plants are extremely complex solar-powered machines that can turn water and carbon dioxide into food. The solar receptors in a plant's leaves are much more efficient at using the energy from the sun than the solar panels that humans have designed and made. All life on earth depends on plants. Without them we would not survive. But how could such a complex machine come into existence through random processes? Again, scientists have no naturalistic explanation as to where plants came from. The creation of plants on the third day was another great miracle of God. Just the fact that we have plants shows that miracles do happen. About the fourth day of creation we read, God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day, and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. Here God supernaturally created the sun, moon and stars. Another great miracle. Can scientists explain how the stars formed using only natural processes? No, they have no answer to that. Do they have a scientific explanation as to how the moon formed? No, of course they don't. These things cannot be explained as they were one-off miracles. Just the fact that we have the sun, moon and stars shows that our God is a God of miracles. Now many people will point to various theories about how all these things happened and say that Bible-believing Christians are just rejecting them because they go against the Bible. The real reason that these theories are rejected, however, 
is the fact that while these theories may explain some of the evidence, they don't explain all of the evidence. Theories about the formation of the universe by natural means don't explain the strong magnetic fields, the spin direction or the heat of the planets, where comets come from or many other things. Just recently it was reported that some scientists were surprised at the appearance of Pluto when it was filmed in close-up for the first time. These scientists were only surprised because they assumed that Pluto was billions of years old. Scientists that held the biblical view that Pluto was only thousands of years old were not surprised by its appearance. Now, this is a very common occurrence. Many new scientific discoveries surprise secular scientists because they cling to the outdated model of the universe being billions of years old. Secular scientists were shown to be completely wrong about their predictions of the planet's magnetic fields because they assumed that the planets were billions of years old, while a scientist using the biblical model of thousands of years successfully predicted the magnetic fields of many of the planets. On day five of the creation week, God created creatures of the sea and birds of the air, and on day six, God created the land-based creatures, now this is one of the most amazing miracles in the whole Bible. Even the simplest life form that we know of is extremely complex. Humans have never come anywhere near making a machine so tiny yet so amazingly complicated as a single-celled organism. No scientist has ever come close to explain how non-living matter could come together through natural processes to form a complex living machine. Even Richard Dawkins admits that it is impossible for a complex machine to come about by accident. Everything we know about science says that life always comes from life. Either life came about by a miracle or by naturalistic processes. Since we know from science that it is impossible for life to come about through natural processes, then this leaves us with the only possibility that life is a miracle. The Bible gives the best explanation as to why we have such a huge variety of creatures. There is no known naturalistic process that is able to explain where all the creatures that we have today come from. Many people think evolution explains the diversity of life. Unfortunately for them, scientists have never been able to explain how evolution could happen. To get from a single-celled organism to a human, you need a huge increase in information. This information is stored in the DNA of every living thing and is a hugely complex code. For evolution to be possible, there needs to be an increase in information to form and operate things like the brain, heart, kidneys, eyes, stomach, arms, legs and many other functions. According to all our scientific knowledge, Information will always deteriorate unless there is some process trying to actively keep that information. For example, if we had a library and just left it alone for hundreds of years, the books would all deteriorate. So it is with all information systems. There is no known instance of information increasing in a system without some intelligence adding it. That is, if we left a library alone for hundreds of years, we would not expect extra information to have been added in the books. So it is with evolution. No one has ever explained where this extra information needed comes from. Some people suggest that mutations provide the extra information needed for creatures to evolve. We know that there are many mutations and that these mutations are nearly always detrimental, though they are not always deadly. There is no known instance of a mutation adding information to the genes. Even if there was a one in a million mutation that did add beneficial information, for each one of these beneficial mutations, there would be hundreds of mutations that made the information worse. Thus creatures would be getting worse, not better. Whenever real life observed examples are given as proof of evolution, these always involve either a loss of information, such as when eyes, legs, wings or other body parts are lost, 
for a shuffling of existing information, such as the peppered moth example, where all that changes is the ratio of one type over another. Whenever secular scientists try to give examples of evolution where information increases, these examples are all hypothetical, not observable or testable. In Genesis 1.27 we read, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. This miracle explains to us just why humans are different from all the animals. There is just no naturalistic explanation as to why humans are so radically different from the animals. The Bible says that the first ever human, Adam, was created from the dust of the ground, and the first ever woman was created from one of Adam's ribs while he was sleeping. It's interesting to note that the rib is one bone in the body that will actually grow back if it's removed. Right from the start, humans have been intelligent, able to communicate, able to use tools and built with the capacity to have a relationship with God. The naturalistic philosophy, however, cannot account for our intelligence, our ability to reason and use logic, or our basis for morality. Adam was created by God with a perfect body that had no genetic defects. After all, God said about Adam and the rest of creation that it was very good. Adam and many of the first people on earth lived over 900 years. After the flood, people were commonly living over 200 years, and even Abraham, Isaac and Jacob had long lifespans. Science tells us that humans are getting genetically worse. Genetic mutations are building up, and these mutations are harmful, not beneficial. The best explanation that we have for all the evidence is that by a miracle, God created Adam and Eve as perfect beings, and that after the fall, genetic mutations set in. Something else that the Bible gives us an answer to, but cannot be explained by naturalistic processes, is why we have male and female. The evolutionary model doesn't come anywhere near explaining why there is male and female in the first place, let alone explaining how simultaneous but opposite changes could happen in male and female bodies when one species changed into another. The creation miracles of Genesis are repeated throughout the Bible to show us that God is the all-powerful creator. It also shows us that the writers of the Bible all had a literal view of Genesis. In Psalm 95 we read, For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Isaiah 40 states, Lift your eyes and look to the heavens, who created all these. He who brings out the starry host one by one, and calls them each by name. And Nehemiah 9 says, You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and all their starry host, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. Many people say that myths and miracles were invented to explain things that ancient people just couldn't understand. What they just don't realize is that in our modern times, myths and miracles are just as readily being made up. It's just that now they are called such things as scientific theory, models or hypothesis. The Big Bang, the theory of evolution, abiogenesis and many of the other modern myths are largely taken as fact but don't actually agree with all the physical evidence. Bob Brocky, a columnist in the local newspaper, said in one of his science columns that he thought people should confront superstitious nonsense and demand experimental evidence for any claim that the Bible makes. Too often Christians assume that secular scientists do have all the answers and that they have explained away all the miracles of Genesis. But if we turned Bob Brocky's statement around and demanded experimental evidence from the secular scientists, we would find that they really don't have the answers. Many of the modern myths that masquerade as science have become ingrained in our thinking and most people fail to even question them. And when people do legitimately question the science, 
they are often branded as religious fundamentalists. Pope Francis, the head of the second largest non-Christian religion in the world, said recently that he didn't believe that what the Bible said in Genesis was true, because that would be too much like God being a magician waving a magic wand. By looking at the miracles of Jesus, we see just how ridiculous the Pope's statement is. When Jesus turned the water into wine, did he need to wait for months while the water changed into wine through natural processes? No, he just spoke the word and it was changed instantaneously. When Jesus calmed the storm, did they need to wait for hours for the storm to dissipate naturally? No, Jesus just spoke the word and the storm stopped straight away. When Jesus healed the man with the shriveled hand, did they have to wait for the hand to heal naturally? No, the healing happened instantaneously. Now, isn't that too much like a magician waving his magic wand? Jesus spoke and things happened, just like the miracles in Genesis 1. Why do Christians so readily believe the miracles of Jesus, but reject the miracles of Genesis? After all, we don't have physical evidence of the miracles of Jesus, but we do have physical evidence of the miracles in Genesis 1. The same secular scientists that say that the miracles of Genesis didn't happen also reject the miracles of Jesus for the same reasons. I've heard Christians reject the literal interpretation of the days in Genesis because they say that the Bible tells us what happened, not how it happened. Well, the Bible doesn't tell us exactly what happened scientifically when Jesus performed the miracles in the New Testament. When Jesus calmed the storm, all he needed to do was say the word peace and the storm was calmed. This echoes the narrative from Genesis 1, which repeatedly states, and God said, and then the miracle happened. If you reject the miracles of Genesis 1 because the Bible doesn't say how they happened, then why not reject the miracles of Jesus for the same reasons? Another obvious thing is that while the Bible may not say exactly how these things came about, it does say how long that it took. The whole of the creation account, as given in Genesis, takes one week. Many Christians will say about the days in Genesis, Oh, but that's just your interpretation. But in Exodus 20.11 we read, For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. This is given as part of a command for the Israelites to keep the Sabbath day holy. We don't need to interpret this verse at all to get the idea that God used six literal days. If the model put forward by the secular scientists was right, the days in Genesis would all be overlapping, of wildly different lengths, and be in a different order to how they are described. How would this convince anyone to observe a week of consecutive, ordered, same-length days? It wouldn't. It would be completely illogical. The best explanation that we have for all the evidence, the one that fits in with all our scientific discoveries, is the one that is given in the Bible. The fact that God created everything during one week about 6,000 years ago gives us the best answer to where the universe came from, where stars came from, how the earth got its water, where plants came from, where life came from, why we have male and female, why humans are different from the animals and many other things besides. Secular science may appear to have answers to questions about our origins, but dig a little deeper and you will find that this is just what they want us to believe. They may have the best naturalistic answer there is, but to get this, huge amounts of evidence have to be ignored. And in the end, their theories are all based on unproven assumptions and faulty logic. People wonder how these secular scientists could be so wrong, yet be so strongly committed to these ideas. This is because they are so focused on trying to find a naturalistic answer to our origins, they are willing to ignore evidence that goes against their views. They don't know there is no supernatural answer, they just assume it. Study the best research in any field, and you realise that the secular scientists don't actually have the answers. Too often the secular scientists in one field of research 
assume that scientists working in another field know the answers. Too often in our society, people just assume that the secular scientists are completely unbiased in their worldview. Too often people wrongly assume that evolution has been proven and that the universe has been proven to be billions of years old. Question the so-called proofs for evolution and the age of the universe and you find that these are all based upon very flimsy reasoning and unproven assumptions. I would encourage people to look into it for yourself. Get past how the secular scientists are interpreting the evidence and look at the actual evidence that has been found. It's easy to see that with each new discovery, the evidence fits quite easily with the biblical account. While many secular scientists are often left scratching their heads trying to fit completely unexpected data into their outdated model. Read the Bible for yourself. For the Christian, there is no need to believe in evolution or that the universe is billions of years old, as the Bible gives the best explanation for our origins. Science doesn't disprove miracles. Instead, if we didn't have the miracles of Genesis 1, we wouldn't even exist and so would know nothing of science.